Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the recent news that Russell T Davies is coming back. I'm joined by a special guest. Phoebe, Hello. do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Phoebe, also known as Deep Space New on Instagram and Twitter. That's a very nice plug you just did there. <laughs> yes, follow me. Follow link, me right now. Link will be in the description. <laughs> um. So yeah. Russell T Davies is coming back. It's amazing. What are your thoughts on that? I honestly, I thought it could happen, but it was like the absolute best case scenario. So when I actually saw the news, um, Sammy was with me. I startled him because I read it and I screamed. <laughs> I think I did the same, to be honest. I remember seeing like a bunch of like fan title sequences from like the past, what, five years or so. Um, they always have titles at the end, like made up titles, uh, so that whatever the title is by Russell T Davis. And every time I saw that, I thought, yeah, that'll never happen. And now it has. But now it has. And it's brilliant. Yeah, honestly, so, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it's just so weird because I, like, before that, not only would RTD not want to come back with like him, well, I always thought like he just want to do his stamp on the show which she's done, and then just not want to come, not, well, really see a reason to come back, because he's done his version of the show, but obviously not. RTDT, what? RTD2. Yep. I feel like, um, as well, it's, he's definitely the breath of fresh air that the show needs right now. He's definitely got a vision for it. Um, he did a talk a while ago talking about, um, the way Marvel is sort of franchise, you've got all these spin-offs, you've got all these things going on. And you saw that with his original run of Doctor Who with Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures. There was this multiverse happening, which could come together whenever it needed to, like Stolen Earth and Journey's End. But there was things running concurrently and it built hype around the show and that sort of died off. So I'm really hoping we get to see that again. Yeah, and it'll hopefully bring the hype back into the show and we'll, we might actually get some marketing please and good we, merch yeah i mean we still don't know the air date for series 13 and it's out next month yeah there's it's... been ideas that it might be on halloween because um bbc america's schedule has been gradually coming out and it looks like there's a doctor who marathon on the days leading up to halloween so we might find out in the next couple of days if not, it won't be airing on Halloween, but there was pumpkins seen on set, so you never know. Oh, yeah. I think that's... That was a Sontarwin episode, weren't it? Yeah. Back in day of filming, so yeah. But I think Jodie Whittaker's on the Graham Norton show on the 14th of mm, October. Interesting. And usually, what I've noticed with stuff like that is when guests go on there, they're promoting something that's due out within the week, so before the next episode of the Graham Norton show is out, because then they'll have guests to promote something that's coming out within that week and stuff like that. It's like they've just had Dover James Bond stars on from, from a new film, and that's out tonight, well, when we film this. Currently don't know when it's going up, but yeah. when we're calling to film this, um, that's out tonight, and they were on on Friday, what day is it today? It is Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they won't be episode on Friday. So, I think um, mid October to Halloween date is very likely, but it's definitely October. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we're kind of getting <laughs> off track on Russell T Davis. To be honest with you, we're just now moaning about the marketing. Yeah, I, it's interesting because she's um, so Jodie Whittaker. I don't think she's in anything upcoming or anything. If she's doing any of the work, so the only thing she could be promoting is Doctor Who. Have we? Have there been any other Doctors that have been on the Graham Norton show because of Doctor Who? Um. Yes. Uh. What, you mean like Jewel in the Time on the yeah, show? Yeah, like to promote Doctor Who. Yeah, Capaldi was on to promote Series 10. That was a week before, 
but no, actually, yeah, it was a week before. Joe has been on a couple of times. She was on for series eleven with Mandit Gill sat in the audience. They didn't even get her on. Oh. They just had a sit. They had it in the audience. Oh. Um, and yeah, to be honest, they get they get the doctors on for every series now. That I think about it. Yeah, that's good. So that is promising. We might get an air date soon. Um, I remember they had um. Matt Smith and David Tennant on for the 50th. Oh, yeah. And Jamie Carr just like, <laughs> he was just making fun of all the nerds that they had coming on the show yeah. to like uh, talk to the doctors and stuff. Yeah, so I remember funny. now. Um, but yeah, I think that's really exciting. And I mean, at the latest, it will be Christmas. So we do have something to look forward to. Whether it will actually be something to look forward to or something to suffer through, we'll have to find out. But, yeah, I mean, we know quite a lot about the series. We know that uh, John Bishop is playing Dan, who's from Liverpool, and he's a plasterer. That's more than enough you need to know about the series. The I Doctor think. will be in it. We know that. Yeah, the Doctor's going to be a woman. Yeah. I don't know if that's confirmed. But that's <laughs> rumours at the moment. <laughs> Wild speculation. Um, speaking of, there have been a few interesting picks for the 14th Doctor. Um, oh, that's a nice segue, that was. Yeah. So, Who do you think? Who do you think he'll cast? I, so I think there's a couple of fan favourites. Um, the, mm. the one that everyone seems to want is Tania Miller. I haven't seen yeah. anything that she's in, but she looks awesome. And there's a, a bit in the um, the Rose novel that Russell T Davies wrote that came out relatively recently. I think it was the Target novelization um, yeah. that described other doctors in the scene where Rose goes to Clive's house. Um, and one of the descriptions was essentially Tania Miller with a freaking sword. So yeah. That oh, is... I was just about to mention that actually. I've got that right next to me. I was gonna, I was, I was gonna bring, I was gonna bring that up, but yeah, yeah, it's basically exactly that, just an exact description of her. Yeah, that would be just, amazing, yeah. and obviously because Russell's written that, that is a direction that he's willing to take the show in, which would be awesome. Um, mm. I personally, I think another candidate is you. Yeah, uh, well, I was gonna say Alexander Siddig. <laughs> yes, obviously, but. <laughs> We both think Alexander Siddig would be an amazing choice for the Doctor. He would genuinely be incredible, and he's totally game for it. But there was an interview with him um, a couple of years ago, I think, when he was working on um, Game of Thrones, or it was maybe Gotham. It was around the time Jodie Whittaker's casting was announced, and he said that he would love to be the Doctor, but he would rather it was a woman before him. And we've had a female mm. Doctor now, so, you know, Russell, please... <laughs> It's his time. It's his time. I think it was also in. I, f I think it was actually a strong contender when Capaldi was being cast. I think Murphy actually considered him. Oh, that's Which, interesting. Oh, imagine him and and Jane Coleman. Oh my god, that would be actually incredible. I. Uh they would have been quite good together, I think. Yeah, I'm just really excited to see what direction Russell goes in in terms of companions because. It's it's weird with like current Doctor Who. So for all of Jodie Whittaker's run, essentially, she's had basically the same companions and now she's going to have Yaz until the end of her run as the Doctor, which we haven't really seen before. There's always been a, a change. There's never been a, one consistent companion except for Eccleston. But that doesn't really count because that was one series. Um, yeah. And even though we know Chibnall can write for multiple characters um, and write characters who have depth because obviously he wrote most of Torchwood um we haven't really seen that with the companions recently so I'm really interesting I'm really interested to see how um Russell T Davies uh sort of treats companions because we know that he does them yeah. well yeah I think by the nearest we've gotten to uh, a companion lasting throughout the show or at least the Doctor's one is uh Jamie he lasted all of the second Doctor's one bar his first episode. Mm. Um, and that's the nearest we've gotten. Um, but no, Yaz has uh, lasted all the way throughout the series. So, well, I say the series, Jodie's entire run. So um, I still think there'll be gaps yeah. if we finish to put in solo third, uh, 13th Doctor stories. Yeah, I, I just honestly, I still can't believe it. 
No, I kind of wish that, um, at least with the final specials, that uh, Jodie would have a couple solo adventures. Yeah, but... yeah, that would be good. I yeah. I feel like they're kind of running out of time to do that. I, I'm interested to see what they do with Yaz, um, because it's essentially a given that she won't be carried over to the 14th Doctor. Um, mm. So will she leave? Will she be made to leave? Or will she die? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think Bradley Walsh was spotted on set of a centine Centene, centenary? Is that how you can yeah. pronounce it? Centenary. Centenary special, yeah. Yeah. It was spotted on set, so you don't know if like some kind of big final battle is going to happen where, well, I was kind of thinking like an Avengers Endgame kind of battle where all the companions have to come back for some reason or something, but to be honest, I doubt Toast and Cole is going to return. Yeah, I, I feel like that would be... The problem with that is that day of filming um, was in Cardiff. And that is, if you're going to do something like that, that is the worst place to carry out the filming for it. Because you, if the second anyone remotely related to Doctor Who is seen in Wales or Cardiff, uh, like, that's it. You know they're probably coming back. Um, literally, oh, literally, though, because my... Mate, he's just moved to Cardiff for university. And who's the first person he sees on his first day there? Jacob Anderson. <laughs> as Vinder. He literally just sent a picture of him yeah. to me, like, of him, like, right next to BBC Studios. And I put it on Twitter. And all the production accounts who, like, are obsessed with DWSR were just, like, retweeting it, like, where was this? Where was this? Where... <laughs> Confirm Jacob Anderson's returning in the special. I'm like... <laughs> Christ. Yeah, it's mad. I mean, I I went to Cardiff um, a couple of weeks ago uh, for a convention and um, we were there for a couple of days and there, I think I saw a production sign up. Um, mm. There was a, so there's, I saw a tweet ages ago, which was about um, codes that the BBC uses to signpost um, production sites. And I think oh, I saw yeah. one of them on a traffic light. So there was, and there was filming going on over that weekend uh, around Cathedral Street that I saw the thing. And obviously there, there was filming ongoing, but I, they might have stopped it for the convention day because they knew there'd be a bunch of nerds around. Um, but yeah, it was really yeah. cool seeing that. Yeah, I think they got those signs for like true rocks and stuff like that. So they know where to take all the set and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, when, I mean, when aren't they filming in Cardiff though? Uh, so they were filming over the weekend of the 18th because um, that was when I was there um, for the convention. They were filming on the Friday and I know they were also filming on the Sunday, but I'm not sure about the Saturday. Um, so they have they have got stuff ongoing and obviously Jacob Anderson was seen there and there was a, a coffee shop that... Um, Bradley Walsh and John Bishop went to, and the lady who runs that was just tweeting non-stop pictures of them there and about them being there. Um, See, I've not seen those. I've not seen the pictures and tweets from there. I've just seen that one picture of John Bishop talking to Bradley Walsh. Yeah, it was... I can't remember the, the name of the coffee shop. It was The Hideaway or something. It was like a sort of coffee kiosk. And um, I think it was on, like, where they were doing um, filming. So this lady had, had sold these two coffee and was just tweeting about it and answering everyone's <laughs> questions. Um, but I think she, she'd probably been told not to say everything because she'd had... Oh, she a, definitely got an angry phone call. Yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Imagine, imagine being a coffee shop owner and getting smacked with a cease and desist by the BBC. Well, that's what you get if you live in Cardiff. True. Living in Cardiff is just one big recipe for a cease and desist. I mean, literally, I mean, literally on Cardiff Bay, you turn one corner, you got the Torchwood Hub, you turn another corner, you've had the Doctor Who experience, and you turn, turn a another corner and there's the diner from Hellbent yeah and Impossible Astronaut it's like everything's there it is it was so weird actually being there because it was um it was like I knew where everything was even though I'd never been there because it's so heavily featured in Torchwood and Doctor Who yeah no I I was the same I went um when did I go now um 
Tw- oh, God, it must be 2015 now, because they were just putting out the uh, Series 9 exhibitions mm. uh, in the Doctor Who experience. See, so, I know, oh, go on. I didn't get to see the Doctor Who experience. I didn't get to go, but um, I know people who've been, and I've heard that it was amazing. Um, mm. I'm really hoping that stuff like that gets brought back now that Russell T Davies is in charge because I think they were planning on bringing it back somewhere. Um, it's just that the old building wasn't fit for purpose because it was falling apart and they couldn't clean the roof. Coincidentally, you say that, they've actually just announced that, um, let me find a tweet now, ready to learn about the science behind Doctor Who, a brand new science exhibition Worlds of Wonder, where science meets fiction, will tour the UK from May 2022. I mean, not exactly the Doctor Who experience, but Close it's a new enough. exhibition. Yeah, that's really well, cool. The picture they've attached just has the face of Owen Cassandra in it, so that's more than enough that I want to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just really glad that the older stuff's getting recognition, and I'm also really glad that Russell's back, because it means that those characters that other writers haven't necessarily trusted themselves with that essentially belong to him, we might get to see them back. We might get to see Donna. We might get to see some interesting Torchwood stuff. Although, given recent events, that's looking a bit less likely. Um, but yeah, it's well, very exciting. Remember when was seen on set? Oh, that was... You're not on set. She was... was literally just having a day out in Cardiff. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, you, you can't go to Cardiff if you've ever been involved in Doctor Who and not have people going absolutely mental. It's it's insane. It's like, I thought like, oh, my mate Joe, uh, oh, he's definitely going to see someone from Doctor Who at some point. Not within his first day of being there. <laughs> I thought that's a bit unrealistic, but Christ. Yeah, I mean, the amount, the, aside from, like, actually meeting Gareth David Lloyd at a convention and that production sign, we didn't really see much Doctor Who stuff. It was really odd. We went to Forbidden Planet, um, and again, this brings back the issues of marketing. We went in Forbidden mm. Planet Cardiff, and they had a, about, I'd say, two feet's worth of shelf of um, discounted big finish Doctor Who CDs and two Doctor Who t-shirts. And that was the extent of it. And that was... I didn't know this old uh, big finish. Because they're essentially (laughs) hidden. It was like I had to really look for them. It was weird because you'd expect more Doctor Who in essentially any, like, decent Forbidden Planet. I mean, it's odd because Cardiff's the capital city, but it doesn't have a Forbidden Planet megastore. It has, like, a small, regular one. But you'd expect there to be a bit more Doctor Who in any branch, let alone the city where the show has essentially lived on and off for the Mm. last... coming on for 20 years now. Um, Yeah. It was really odd. So I'm just hoping that with Russell coming back, we'll go back to that sort of heavy merchandising good sort of promotional material approach that was taken because it definitely helps with viewership. Yeah. I just want to go back to the days of uh, seeing a massive border in uh, Toy Story Wars and having that massive wall filled with Doctor Who stuff. Yeah. I remember walking in when uh, into a local Toy Story Wars as a kid and seeing that on the wall. It was, oh, amazing. Yeah, I've still got... Um... <laughs> I've still got stuff from the uh, Doctor Who magazine, like those Slitheen rubber fingertip things. Um, yeah, that, looking back, that's a bit of an odd thing to just include as a wee gift. But it was cool. And they had a, it was very cool. this horrible... I remember when um, Human Nature, Family of Blood uh, aired, they did so much uh, magazine stuff based around that episode because it was a two-parter. It was big and they wanted to promote it. And they mm. one of the gifts was the the a mask of one of the scarecrows, and it was so horrible. Uh, but we've still got it yeah. somewhere, and we just it it just kind of was around when I was growing up, and that was from the Doctor Who magazine. We also had um we had a couple we had three three more things we had a is it Dalek which which Dalek is it who um becomes a a human hybrid is it Sec Dalek Sec hybrid yeah yeah we got the mask of that. We got a bin uh, with a TARDIS on it that makes TARDIS noises when you throw things in it, and we yeah. got uh, one of those remote control. We got a remote control Dalek sack. You tried to get anything like that with the current sort of merchandising, you just wouldn't be able to. 
No, I remember um, how you said uh, they they had like to ravine fingers, and that, and I remember they were one, ones that you just uh, fit over your fingers, and they gave you like a set of ten. They also did Davros ones and uh, Weeping Angel ones. Yeah, I had those they, as well. They, yeah, they did them a couple times. I remember there was also um, oh when uh, Matt Smith first became the Doctor, they relaunched it. And they um they put in a clock, and they had to recall it, and I can't remember exactly what was wrong with it. I think I think the batteries they had in it were leaking, and oh. that was something. Some yeah, something was wrong with it. So they recalled it, but I think my mum just happened to pick it up for me, and like just what just happened to be the day it came out, and I've still got it somewhere. What you probably so you... have been killing me all these years. <laughs> your your Doctor bed. Who chemical weapon. A Doctor Who chemical weapon clock from Doctor Who Adventures. Quality. Yeah, I was just going to say I'm, I'm just so excited to see what's going to happen next. Mm. I've always pondered, like, is it Chibnall who's made the marketing decisions or is stuff like that a high up? I think decision? it's a combination of um, yeah. what the BBC are willing to budget for and um, what the showrunner wants. Um, but if if he wanted to push for merchandise, I think he has the ability to do so. Um, but I think it's also, it's sort of a perpetuating circle of, you know, the show's not getting as much viewership, so the BBC aren't as willing to put as much money into merchandising and promotion because it's a slowly sinking ship. Um, but that means that the show's getting less promotion, so it's getting less viewership, and the cycle continues. For the willing to put budget into stuff like Find the Doctor, God, how unsatisfying was that end? <laughs> I genuinely... I, I was expecting there'd be a trailer or something, and then yeah. did people brute force the password? They did, didn't they? Because it was meant I to think... end... It was meant to end, like, two weeks after it did, but people... Um, mm people realised there was no limit to how many times you could try the password. So it was really just a question of getting to the last letter and then just trying every combination of final like um, characters until you got the correct one and got in, which was really stupid. Yeah. But, I, yeah. I, think it, I think it was only a couple of days before it was supposed to end because I think there were still two clues still to come out, which is still like... You can easily work it out with two things left because you just try each thing on your keyboard. Yeah. But um, God, I had a thought, ending. like, cause, because once everything got leaked and stuff, which was only, what, a picture of what looked like a Sontaran's eye and mouth and a new Puroma picture of the Doctor. Yeah. And I thought, oh, have they just not uploaded everything they were supposed to yet because it's obviously been leaked early and someone's just cracked into it. But then the day actually came of uh, when everything was supposed to be revealed and stuff, and it's literally just the exact same stuff. They didn't, they didn't upload like a trailer or anything. I just, I feel like it was for them. It was more about the experience of taking part in a scavenger hunt and the satisfaction of solving it. But at the same time, while you can sort of pat yourself on the back for figuring out the clues, there's got to be a satisfying conclusion, and there really wasn't one. No, we didn't really get to the good ending. No, we got the bad ending. It was, it's, we... just, it's, just, it's just a bad ending for that. Just a bad ending. But um, hopefully we'll get some better stuff with RTD now back in back in charge. Yeah. I'm just I'm looking forward to more spin-offs because that's definitely what he wants to do. Um, and I yeah. feel like with, with Bad Wolf sort of um, behind the wheel as well, um, there's definitely a lot of potential for that. Um, I just, yeah, I'm really excited for it. And I feel like, especially with the big Finnish sort of gang, um, who are still churning out absolutely incredible stories, I feel like there's just so much potential. They've got such mm. a wide pool of good writers they can commission to write stories for spin-offs. And I honestly think if Russell takes it in that direction, it will be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think that he's got the capability to do that. I think the issue that the BBC had when it came to finding a new show runner is whoever they got would have to start on the sixtieth. 
Yeah. Now I don't think anyone wanted to start on the 60th. Yeah, it's and I thought sorry for whoever the new Doctor's going to be. Yeah. Because their first episode is going to be the 60th. Yeah, I mean, that could be exciting. Um, Peter Capaldi got revealed in Day of the Doctor, and that was that was awesome. Um, oh, I remember seeing that in cinemas. That was just brilliant. That was, yeah. I mean, he was he was incredible casting because obviously David Tennant is very much my doctor, but um, mm. I honestly think that Peter Capaldi is just the doctor. Um, yeah, he he was born for that role and he so wanted it and he just it, he was amazing. Oh yeah, definitely he just aced it hundred percent. So I'm, but, um, yeah, I'm hoping that we get that quality of casting um, coming up. Yeah. I think I think we're definitely in safe hands with RTD when it comes to casting and definitely. stuff and storytelling as well. I think everything from now on is well. I think only going to go up really. Yeah, I mean you you can't go downhill from Timeless Child really. You can't. No, I've always had the inkling that Chidon never wanted the job, and it's... he still doesn't want the job. It's odd because he um he had a five year plan and he said he did and he did he did so well on Torchwood and then you just got the mm. impression with because obviously he's always had a vested interest in Doctor Who and doing what he wants with it because he um there's that video from all those years ago about him mm. uh him him reviewing an episode it's all the fact, silly monsters the and fact running down on corridors. The DVD. It's on the DVD as well oh, of God. the True Wild of the Time Lord, which came out, what, 2006? So it's just. Oh, that's just one of the best yeah. videos ever. It's just, it's not like he doesn't love Doctor Who. I just feel like with the pattern that was established with New Who, his stuff hasn't quite fitted. Yeah, and you say about him having his five year plan and stuff. Obviously, you know, he's not done five series, he's only done three. But it has been five years since uh, since uh, he'd begun on the show. So, this could be what he sort of meant by his five-year plan, because it's been five years, but only three series. So, I don't know. I mean, I think we'll definitely get a culmination of the time of Shadow Dark in series 13 and the specials. But... I do feel like his execution could have been a bit better and yeah. possibly could have done with, with a couple more series. Yeah, definitely, because there was a lot to unpack there. But um, also, I know, so RTD has a lot of respect for Chris Chibnall and what he's done with Doctor Who. So it'll be interesting mm. to see where he takes it, because he's not just going to turn around and sort of overwrite what's been done with the whole Timeless Child arc. He's He's going to respect that with his writing, but probably still take it in interesting directions. So that'll be cool to see, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and I think when, when the show came back, a lot of people forget that technically, before the show came back, the Doctor was half human. Yeah. And that just sort of got a bit sort of brushed under the carpet. So I have a feeling that, well, it's not going to get brushed under the carpet, but there'll just be no need to mention it, really. Yeah. Because it's like at the end of... Um, the New Year's special, I'm actually kind of like, oh, well, I'm the Doctor. This is who I am right here right now. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. Um, so I do think that it'll just be like, a, well, it happened. Let's just carry on with the show. I don't think it'll change anything in the long term. Yeah, I, I feel as if there's, there's ways to pay respect to it and for it to just become another part of the mythos. Um so it'll it'll be interesting to see how that's sort of worked in if it's it won't be brushed under the carpet but it will sort of become just a fact of the character um but this as you were saying with the doctor being half human there was a lot of stuff going on in the tv movie um that they sort of had to retcon out or i think it was actually the half human thing was referenced at one point in new who someone one of the doctors said i was half human at one point and that was sort of just a little little reference there um yeah in the tv movie they um they changed canon quite a bit they they had the doctor being half human on his mother's side i think and they also had yeah. um so the doctor and the master were meant to be half brothers um and their father was a time lord called ulysses and the films were meant to be a trio uh sort of a um a trilogy and they would spend the trilogy searching for ulysses 
Um, and obviously the second and third films did not get made, um, but the, the first one was leading up to some major changes in who the Doctor was and how the stories worked. Mm, yeah, have you read the uh, the Bible, the film Bible of what they have learned to do past that first one? I think I I think I skim read a section of it or I read a sort of boiled down version of it, um, which was really interesting. But I also watched um, Paul McGann's audition um, and that was really interesting because that was directly um, drawing on the new canon. Yeah, I think at that point they have, because um, I think one point during production they just sort of, sort of sort of chucked out all the ideas they had for everything, sort of passed it and stuff with the whole um, half, uh, half pool rubber stuff with a master, because obviously they didn't really know if it was, if they were going to do more or not. But they, if they had gotten a series, what they were going to do is for sort of just redo some, some of the episode. So I think, if I remember right, one of them was Tomb of the Cybers, mm. and the Cyber Man would be slightly different, something like that, just because of the Cybers or something. And um, there's uh, the Abominable Snowman as well, um, a couple others as well. But the whole series would have just been sort of remakes of old favorite episodes. Yeah, that's that. That would have been cool, but um, obviously it didn't happen. And if it had, we wouldn't have gotten New Who. So. That's... But we'd have gone and Paul McGann as the Doctor. Yeah, so I think. I, I feel I like there's room for that. I feel like um, we could still have a series of that. Russell T Davies would be down to write that. And Paul McGann loves coming back as the Doctor. He's mm. not aged, so that would be super cool. Um, that man, I want to know what his secret is. I I kind of don't. I feel like it's something dark and horrible. <laughs> he is 62 and he looks just gone 40. It's Mm. Insane. What's but wait? How do... old is Peter Capaldi? Peter Capaldi's six. Uh, what I say, P- Peter Capaldi's about sixty. What? I don't know actually. What? I'm going to no, Google no, there's it. There's no what right. They are literally about the same age, Paul McGann and Peter Capaldi. I right, I want on. to forget that piece now. of information. Uh, Paul McGann is sixty-one years old. And Peter Capaldi is 63, so he's two years older. That is cursed. I feel like, yeah, so he's obviously, Paul McGann is awesome. And him coming back as the Doctor, even if it's just for a mini series written by Russell T Davies or someone he trusts, mm. would be awesome. Um, yeah. That would I be really cool. There's definitely only space for it if... RTD wants to do is sort of universe of Doctor Who shows. Yeah. When the show's off after six months, we could have Paul McGann and then a six month gap again, and then the show comes back on or something like that. Yeah, I feel I like there's, there's definitely space. There's so much potential for spin offs as well. It's not like they've not got any any talented writers that they can bring in because there there are people who have been consistently writing good stories for both Doctor Who and Torchwood for the last sort of. Mm. Um, sort of five years the Torchwood monthly range the quality is consistently good I'd say the stories are are sort of sometimes less engaging because they've got less sort of widely liked characters but Mm. it is still consistently good people like James Goss if they were brought in to to write for TV consistently uh, that would be good that would be extremely enjoyable TV because there are people with all these ideas that may work really, really well in live action. It's really just about giving people the chance. I think James Goss is, like, severely underrated in the Doctor Who fandom. Like, everything mm. he's done is, like, the good version of Ian Levine. Yeah. And everyone just likes him. <laughs> yeah, honestly, he's he's great. It's it's also quite fun replying to him on Twitter. Um He's, he's yeah. a good lad, and I I would trust him to write um to to either write his own spin off or to to do commission scripts for the main show because he is he is awesome, um and the good thing about spin offs is is they give they'll give RTD the chance to try out new writers, um because there's been a lot of people who've gotten into sort of involved in 
Doctor Who and shown their writing talent through writing for Torchwood and Sarah Jane and things. Um, like, Gareth David Lloyd started writing. If there were to be another spin-off, yeah. he could possibly write an episode. Um, Definitely. I think I think it's more than capable. Yeah. And I think with stuff like if the Eighth Doctor was to get a series, I think obviously the best place to do it would be during the Time War and stuff. Yeah. Because, I mean, although there's going to be audios... Uh, it would kind of make TV and audio fans happy because the time was so big and goes on for so long. You can just put a series at any point for the Eighth Doctor without interfering with the audios. Yeah, because the whole... You could, just... you could just pull in, like, John Dorney, Matt Fitton. Mm. Just get, like, anyone who's done, like, a big... who's done, like, a big finish audio and then just sort of make my dreams a reality <laughs> yeah. and, like, they finish on TV pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's also, it's the time war. It, it doesn't necessarily have to happen just before New Who begins in our timeline. It, it's mm. The whole point is it's going on throughout all of time and space. The only time at which it has a linear end is for the, the Time Lords and the Daleks. So it can you can have a time war story set at any point in Earth's history, which is really interesting. Um, and it just gives you so much freedom with writing for the Eighth Doctor. But I also think writing a even before the Time War, there's so much potential because, um, like, he's so in stranded. He's got a bunch of new companions, and also Andy from Torchwood was a temporary companion. Um, yeah, I feel I've like that, that would. I've had that on today. That would make no Torchwood fans very happy. I haven't listened to it yet, but I really want to. Um, oh, so good. It is very good. Yeah, like that would make Tortured fans happy. Um, and mm. obviously, Tom Price would probably kill to come back. Um, yeah. So yeah, that would be really interesting. I'm I'm really excited to see what's what's on offer in terms of spin-offs in the hopefully relatively near future. Although at this rate, I'll have finished my degree by the time we get anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, I I think it'll be worth the wait. I think it'll definitely be worth the wait. Definitely, definitely. I think. If uh, if Torchwood is to ever make a TV return and stuff, there's hundreds of possibilities to go down with that because I don't think we'll see a return to current Torchwood for, well, no particular reason at all, let's just say. <laughs> no no <laughs> but, reason um, or, or, or small no, reason no attached reason to, to a human being that, the, that that could possibly be the case. Um, no human being who tends to dye his hair or sometimes mm, goes grey. Mm-hmm, uh, or uh, does does things with his thing. Um, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Oh, honestly, no. I'm not. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's just so frustrating because we were, there was that tease in that... Um, was it Revolution of the Daleks? Where there was like, oh, it was, a, yeah, it was essentially was like a backdoor pilot for new Torchwood. I know. <laughs> it's, oh, it's just a pain to think about. But I do think that, that there's tons of possibilities to go down in terms of a Torchwood reboot. Yeah. There's Torchwood Soho, Victorian Torchwood. Yeah. That's just. You know, I feel hundreds like of different possibilities. It's not completely impossible. I, I hate to be that person, but it's not completely impossible for Yanto to come back. Because, um, so Gareth David Lloyd's gone on record as saying he would come back if there was some kind of twist to it. He wouldn't just come back if it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows because that's boring. Mm. Um, but if Yanto came back as a darker, sort of slightly corrupted character, he would do that. And that would be really engaging drama because there's so many possibilities. You could just bring him back from the dead or you could have Pete's world Yanto, who is very much alive. Or you could have Yanto from Shrouded, which is the comic that GDL wrote. Um, There's so many possibilities and it would definitely play into his skills as an actor. And it wouldn't be too much of a stretch from canon. It's really just a question of what RTD is willing to do. Yeah, I'm just currently staring at all the big finish that I've got on the shelf and stuff. (laughs) Just thinking of like, oh, but what was the chances of this character come? I mean, I know there's like very small chances of any big finished characters coming to TV, but Mark Bernard's the eleven. Oh my God, was created for TV. Yeah, he's. I don't know if you've heard any of his stories, but his character is just the best in all of Big Finish's original cre- created characters. Yeah. He's just so good as the 11. 
Yeah. And the War Master. I want the War Master too. That would be awesome. Again, Paul McGann spin off. Come on. Come on, Russell. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> it would just be the best. Yeah. And he's facing David Tennant in the next box set. So come on, Russell. Come Dave, on. David and Derek. It's made for TV. Go on, lad. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see what's in store for us and uh, I'm definitely willing to wait however long it takes to get some new and exciting Doctor Who content. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it'll be... what. Well, like I say, it can only go up now, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's only up from here. Um, but yeah. Only up. <laughs> Thank you but so yeah. much for having me. No worries, thank you for coming on. And I'll leave a link to your Instagram, Twitter. Do you want anything else linking? I, I think that's everything. Thanks, Dan. Follow Dan. Follow him. Follow him thank on everything. You, thank you. Click the links. Uh, <laughs> there's also, we're doing, uh, I'm being a special guest on the podcast as well. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about that? Yeah, so I am a co-host on a podcast called Hoodle Safe House, uh, which is on YouTube. Uh, so far, we only have one commentary track up. Um, but as as and when I can edit things, there will be new content on the channel, including the episode we're recording in two days. So until then, goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. A very nice uh, two one is kind of goodbye. But... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>